Welcome to Flash Show Weekly. It's the big 200 episode, and we have a very special guest joining us. And Atlanta United have also done something they've never done before up above the border. We'll get into all that and more coming up. Welcome to the show, Flash Show fam. I'm AJ, and this is Chris Smith. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. So, Fasha fam, welcome to the show, and I have a very special guest in Chris Smith from 90 Men. He, of course, uh, has been... Uh, kind of a guy that's been in and around that Atlanta United uh, uh, Twitter space for us, uh, really maybe breaking some news or uh, you know providing some awesome stats during the game, after the game on the players that were of note. I mean, it's awesome to have you, but uh, welcome to the show, Chris. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. It's uh, great to be here and appreciate the kind intro. Oh, absolutely, man. And uh, yeah. You know, we'll get into uh, some of the awesome things you did this week, uh, or maybe this past weekend, but uh, we will, yeah, maybe just check in on you and see how you've been. I mean, you know, in terms of also, you know, your temperature on Atlanta United, how you're feeling about us. Uh, we're in a playoff spot. We're in fifth. I mean, we're in and out, yo-yoing in and out of uh, playoff uh, contention. But, uh, yeah, do you feel like... LA United is a true contender for, uh, you know, not only a playoff spot, for, but for maybe MLS Cup. Uh, I mean, maybe MLS Cup to go all the way might be a stretch, but on the team as a whole, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I think now with the with the schedule that Atlanta have got left, I'd, I'd say that not a shoe in, but they're, they're pretty nailed on now to make the playoffs. They've, they've got one of the most favorable runnings, so feeling pretty good. You know, the we look a lot better under Pineda and obviously Valentino before that. And, you know, we're, we're passing forwards now. We're, we're, we seem to have some more intent and games look exciting again. So whatever happens at this point, at least it's been fun again. But yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, also uh, our away form just slightly inched just a little <laughs> bit better. <laughs> our third uh, away win of the season, uh, you know, first time winning in Toronto um, yeah it's not as dire maybe as it seems uh, you know did that performance in Toronto give you some confidence yeah quite tough judging Toronto at the moment because they've been quite poor all season um, up until really Javier Perez has took over and they look more like the Toronto of old again so by the time Atlanta got there they were actually in a good bit of form again so to actually pick up the win there I think is really positive so Maybe for Pineda, I think the game was a little bit more open than he would have liked. Um, gave up a few too many chances on another day. Could probably could have been punished, but then again, by contrast, Atlanta created plenty of more chances to score more than two themselves, even if they were fortunate with the goals they got. So overall, yeah, away from home and what is normally a tough place to go, a lot to be excited about, and especially considering now we're coming back to three straight home games as well. Mm -hmm, indeed, and uh, well... There is uh, maybe a little caveat that maybe should be had uh, where, you know, Toronto, they did bring on Pozuelo and Altidore afterwards uh, for some reason. It's I've, I've surmised it's rest, but it also, uh, yeah, they looked a little bit more dangerous, obviously, after that. Uh, which, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we, I still think, though, uh, we still fared so well in the sense of, uh, you know, our uh, our fatigue levels didn't really drop. You know, our uh, our energy levels didn't drop. Our um, you know basically for many of our players, especially even seeing you know Marcelino Moreno uh, and George Bello make gut busting runs at the end of the match in stoppage time. I mean, is uh, I think a very very good sign that uh, you know the. Uh, the fitness levels of the team are still very, very high, especially after uh, an international break. It should be right. Yeah, that, that's a, it's a really good point. Um, earlier in the season, I don't think you'd have seen Atlanta do that. How many times did we get sort of bust open in the last t ten minutes and throw away a two-goal lead? In the, and this time, instead, we're going down the other end in stoppage time and, and making a two-goal lead. And it, it was an intense game as well. And um, obviously, there was the uh, 
the altercation with uh, Ezekiel Barco and obviously it was a bit of an end-to-end -end game and under those conditions, it, as you say, with, with internationals as well, it, it, it's easy to burn out and sort of lose your foot in the game and maybe throw away points where you shouldn't do. And I think maybe earlier in the season, Atlanta would have done that, but definitely a good sign that they were able to ride that out and kill the game in, in stoppage time. Mm -hmm. And especially, yeah, Gonzalo Pineda, he spoke after the match about how they trained uh, on this pretty much, uh, you know, making sure that, uh, yeah, on away games that they see out matches and that they, uh, they know what to do. Um, now, I mean, it's not like maybe levels of, say, like Philadelphia Union where we're shithousing like they are, but uh, <laughs> we definitely uh, are doing the right things to, uh, yeah, make sure that all points go home with us. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what, what else did you see in terms of uh, maybe from our midfield, you feel like, um, you know, especially with, uh, you know, Hosetu, Sosa, like, are you are you liking, um, you know, that double pivot, especially Hosetu, who's come on kind of leaps and bounds after he kind of got reintroduced into the side? Yeah, I mean, and with Rosetto, it was always going to be tough making that adjustment into MLS with the with the increased physicality and obviously he struggled with a few injuries. And I think the biggest worry was pairing him with Santiago Sosa when Sosa's already done so much on his own mm -hmm. and quite often looked tired. And what you forget about Sosa as well, he's so calm on the ball mm -hmm. and he's he's so effective that you forget how how few minutes and how few professional games he's played before he's come to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So to see the two of them kind of they've kind of been pushed together through necessity with obviously with Emerson Hyman going out for so long and you know Mo Adams hasn't been able to get fit so there's been very little room for rotation um, but yeah they're both really good on the ball that's the first thing that that's comes out to me they're really secure in possession and um, uh, there was a game a few weeks a few weeks back if you're gonna don't quote me on who it was because I can't remember yeah. but like, Rossetto completed 100% of his passes in the first half and I remember looking at the pass maps that you can get on, on the MLS website and a lot of them were forward as well I know he's been accused of passing backwards too much but I think his confidence has grown as well he, he started progressing the ball a bit more which you know that's the whole point our most dangerous players are, are, are up top we've, we've got more firepower there than most teams in the league to be quite honest so if you can if you can get them balls into them quickly and you've got someone who can, who can break lines that's great and it, it looks like now we've got two players who can do that and Obviously, then at wing back you've got Bello and, and Brooks Lennon, who's delivery, especially Lennon, his delivery second to none. So, yeah, I'm liking it so far. And um, what happens when you come up against a team that's really truly equipped? Yeah, as you mentioned before, maybe if Pozuelo starts, that'd be interesting to see how they handle him, and maybe someone like Carlos Hill from from the from the Reds, if we ever come up against them, maybe it's a different story, but. For the, for the teams that we've got to put away here the rest of the season, I, I do like that double pivot. Yeah, especially, yeah, if we're playing a little bit more attacking, a little bit more aggressive, then absolutely, uh, yeah, you can see them doing well. But yes, you make a great point. You know, the Carl's heels of the world. Um, yeah, I think I have my reservations about Hosetu defensively. Uh, he pretty much, I don't really rate him too much defensively, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> Like, uh, is, there's uh, quite a few rash tackles that he, maybe he gets a, a, away with a little bit. But, um, and then Sosa, um, yeah, as great of a player as he's been throughout the season, uh, lacks a little bit of pace maybe. And so it's, there's a little bit of yeah, yeah. Uh, that athleticism, maybe that, uh, that bulldog that's, yeah, you know, Franco Ibarra returning, um, you know, is that maybe player that can uh, offer that for us. But, um, yeah, you know, Maybe just to kind of uh, touch on a bar, you know, real quick. Uh, what do you think of his performance versus Toronto? I think with a bar again, it's it's like Sosa. He's so young that it, it you've got to ex, you've got to sort of shift your expectations of him. But I, mm -hmm. I think not so much in the Toronto game because I'll be quite honest with you. By the time he came on. I was quite drunk on MLS by that point, so it, he, didn't, <laughs> he didn't quite stick out as much as possible. But what yeah. I do know about Lazaro is he always offers a ton of energy. And if that's the guy you've got coming off the bench towards the end of the game to sort of help Sosa with that mobility and, and maybe bail out Rossetto, then I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, Lazaro's not been perfect this season, um, 
but he's a young kid who's come to a new league and he's still and he's he struggled with fitness problems at times as well so mm-hmm. but he, every time he comes on he does seem to have that that energy and that bite about him which against some of the bigger teams in the east and then i think that's definitely going to be key yeah definitely and uh yeah one thing we haven't spoken about is uh luis Adarujo's uh little oopsie chip goal that uh yeah we uh we definitely embarrassed our uh definitely not old friend definitely old nemesis in kamar lawrence uh and uh you know a couple times for those two goals uh definitely awesome to see of course but um yeah what'd you think uh yeah did he did he mean it or uh was it an oopsie no, he definitely didn't mean it. <laughs> he's completely chanced it, but you know what? I, I think I remember him saying if, if that's how he's got to score goals every week, then fine, so be it. You take yeah. him as they come. Mm-hmm. Even, even Moreno's goal at the end, it, it was a great run, don't get me wrong, and to do that run so late into the game in what was such an intense game was, was fantastic, but let's face it, he's basically tackled that ball into the net. So, you know... Absolutely, that's sorry. exactly what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I mean... So- Slightly fortunate on, on both counts, really. But then yeah. again, we created other chances that maybe we should have scored. At Arujo himself missed missed a pretty decent chance. So, mm-hmm. you know, you, you make your own look at the end of the day. Right, and that's been kind of the thing is uh, making sure when, especially when we're playing false nine, uh, or mm-hmm. I guess like even false nines, maybe at this point. Uh, yeah, that it was, uh, you know, making sure that we can put the ball in the back of the net. But um, yeah, and then, well, speaking on that, Ezekiel Barco, uh, yeah, you know, with that uh, red card, of course, you know, he will miss the NYCFC match. Uh, it did come out today. We're from this on a Tuesday, full transparency that, um, yeah, uh, it has not been rescinded. It is still, yeah, unfortunate that he, uh, whatever he did, uh, <laughs> the cameras weren't ex- especially on that whole altercation so uh we're yeah. just going by the word uh but uh there maybe was a headbutt there maybe was a little bit of a hand to face but that's just going by words and mm-hmm. um yeah i mean uh but you know largely uh yeah what'd you think of barco in this match though because i thought yeah he was having a hell of a match yeah mm-hmm. i mean just just quickly touching on the red card i did manage to um, to get a quick quick uh, video of the of the incident in question it was a bad angle and I, but i posted it on twitter anyway and if that's the red card then we've got yeah it's definitely uh, problems i think it's uh, uh you know it's it's they've come together for a moment they stared each other down and touched touched faces you know it's basically a hug so if you know if, <laughs> if that's a red card then we've, we've got problems I think in any other league that's a yellow card but mm. we'll leave that there you know the decision's made um, we, we can't we can't change anything for the NYCFC game, but he'll be a big miss. Um, yeah, he, he really did another one of those performances that we're, we're getting more used to seeing now. Where he drives Atlanta forward so well, um, he stopped running into those those sort of dead ends as much as he used to. And when he gets to the top of the box now, he he really is smart with his with his distribution. He's linking up well. Uh, yeah, because that for that first goal, back to the, uh, the the pass that he played back to George Bellota in the bit. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like that, that's the sort of thing you're getting from Barco now. Not obviously the, the free kicks and and the goals he scores himself are, are spectacular, and and that's going to catch the headlines. But it's those little sort of those little pre assists and those little smart passes that break open the defense. But his decision making and his execution is so much better now. He's he's been a new player since we've come back. He's come back from the Olympics, so. Great to see, but yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be a big miss. Indeed, and so yeah, that definitely uh, brings some big questions on who's going to play, maybe in his uh, steed. Uh, but yeah, you know, getting into some uh, some of the news, uh, Marcelino Moreno, he made the uh, MLS Team of the Week. It was uh, Gonzalo Pineda's birthday, and uh, yeah, he got in on some of those festivities as well. Uh, yeah, a little bit more for uh, Pineda in, uh, in this one yeah. than... Uh, than just a cake, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the coach deserves it though. To be fair, so right, it seems like he's uh, he's the one who's kind of spurred this on a little bit in terms of uh, the celebrations. Where uh, I'm sure the groundskeepers are very much uh, loathing <laughs> the uh, <laughs> their day every single time that they have to uh, get to kind of witness that. But um, but yeah, and so you know, all in all, uh, you know, a, a good weekend for Atlanta United, especially. Uh, another 
trip to Canada, and this time it goes a little bit better, so, you know, that's good. Uh, Sans, is, of course, is Echo Barco Red, but, um, but yeah, you know, going into that NYCFC match, um, you know, we still have questions regarding, uh, you know, Jose Martinez as well. How many minutes can he play, or can he even start? Uh, NYCFC also, I mean, you know, are, uh, you know, they're doing decently this season, and uh, it's an attack that's really, really strong, but it's also, um, you know, they're very inconsistent. They're a team that are pretty young, Sans, Maxi Morales. And uh, so, you know, they're still trying to figure out uh, what type of team they are. But um, nonetheless, they're going to be a... Ooh, my mic just fell, but uh, <laughs> here we go. Ooh, hopefully uh, RIP your ears, uh, listeners. Sorry about that, but... Um, but yeah, and so, you know, it's a type of team that, uh, maybe we, you know, we should be putting away, especially at home, but, uh, you know, I, how do you see it, uh, you know, on Wednesday? Yeah, if you'd have asked me this about three months ago, I don't think I'd have felt very good about it, but Atlanta seems to have trended upwards and NYCFC are, are, re are really in a slump. Um, I managed to catch their game against the Red Bulls at the weekend and, they were so flat throughout. I mean, I know Red Bulls are doing okay at the moment and they're defending really well, but this isn't the NYCFC that we've become so used to, not just at the start of this season, but over the years. It's always been a bit of a mystery why they've not gone a bit further in the playoffs uh, on a number of occasions, but mm -hmm. 2018 aside, obviously. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, no, I think now with, with, with the way the, the two teams are trending, I'm pretty, pretty happy about it. I saw... Felipe Cardenas report, I think it was earlier today, that Joseph looked good in training. He, he was taking part in rondo drills as well and looked really sharp. So he seemed confident that, he, that he's ready to step back in. And if that's the case, given that Barco's out and what's at stake, especially with where NYCFC are in the table as well, I think you've got to start him and just put faith in, in the fact that he can do an hour and hope that does the damage because... Mm -hmm. If you take him out, who, who are you going to put in instead? Is it going to be Kubo Torres or someone like that? Um, do, you, do you keep Luis Arujo and, and Marcelino Moreno up as a two and go for a bit more of a solid midfield, but then you're losing that creativity? So mm -hmm. if, he's, if he's fit to, to play, he's fit to start, in my opinion, and just see how far you can push him and, and give him the chance to do damage. But that NYCFC team, they're dangerous, but... And I, I like Tati Castellanos a lot. I really do like him, but he, he is inconsistent. He does miss chances. So I expect our back three to really be able to deal with that. And then obviously Anton Tinnerholm being out as well. I think that's a big relief to George Bello because I think he might have got pinned back there. But with him being out, I think they're a very different side at the back as well. He's such a big miss for them that mm -hmm. I, think, I think we should come out on top. Yeah, yeah. If there's more joy for George Bellow, it usually means there's a little bit more joy for LA United as well. Uh, because, yeah, you know, uh, as good as uh, Brooksland's deliveries are, uh, they c can be a little bit predictable at times. And uh, George Bellow, yeah, you know, will he cross? Will he drag it back? Will he, uh, you know, take it himself? There's a little bit mm -hmm. more var variability, and um, that causes a little bit more. I think kind of unease for the opposing sides for sure, but um, but yeah, you know, getting into that uh, kind of predicted starting eleven. Then I mean, uh, mm. yeah, of course, Goose between the sticks. Uh, you know, would you rotate like Miles Robinson did play uh, for the U.S. Men's National Team? Sort of George Bellow. Uh, would you rotate for this uh, match? That uh, three-man backline and the the wingbacks. Until you brought it up, I would have said no. But thinking about who's coming up after NYCFC and obviously into Miami having Gonzalo Higuain, it might not be a bad idea to to bring George Campbell in and, and let Miles rest up for that one. I know Higuain isn't the, the force that he used to be, but he's he's still a very intelligent striker. And I think you need a very intelligent centre-back to, to snuff him out. So... To prepare for that game, I know you take it one game at a time, but it's it's a busy schedule and you've got to manage the load. And I, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, I think Franco and and Walks are looking good and for the for the most part, so I think they can stay in. But yeah, keep Miles fresh and bring Campbell in. There's nothing that Campbell's done to tell me that he can't deal with a player like Castellanos or a team like NYCFC for sure. Yeah, no, I I don't uh, disagree there for sure. And so. Uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, I think I, it could go either way, and uh, yeah, I kind of lean towards you as well. You brought a, a yeah very sound point there. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, with the wing backs, George Bello, Brooks Lennon, would you persist there, or would you bring in maybe a Jake Mulraney on the left, uh, Ronald Hernandez on the right? Uh, no, I think this this really picks itself. Obviously, we mentioned with with George Bello before, with with Tinnehome be, not being there, it might open up a bit more space for him, and then. I think getting Joseph back, I think it's important to have someone on the other side who can deliver, who will deliver consistent crosses in Brooks Lennon. So, mm-hmm. and especially with, with NYCFC's defensive misgivings at the moment as well, I think getting those two pressing high, delivering the box on one side, driving the ball on the other, I think I think that's going to be important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, I think we we maybe rotate uh, against Miami if mm-hmm. it were, yeah. um, and maybe give you know George Bello. 70, 75 minutes, um, you know, just to kind of uh, keep everything fresh anyway. The only, the only thing I would say, though, is you're uh, you're really asking for Brett Shea to punish you there on Saturday <laughs> and the weekend, aren't you? But, you know, uh, you take that to <laughs> Yeah, uh, as, uh, as great of a guy that Brett Shea was, as, uh, you know, um, those that have seen his video on our channel where we hung out with him with... Uh, him doing his tats and whatnot, uh, yeah. When he when he punched us uh, in the air, it really kind of made it sour for uh, for me anyway, because I was like, why did we never play him that way? You know, obviously six six player, uh, we should absolutely be lumping it high to him in the box when it's late. I mean, it's just uh, remiss <laughs> that we didn't do that. But anyway, um, yeah. So same, yeah. I would go with George Bello and Brooks Lennon. Uh, mm-hmm. On the right, but uh, in midfield, I think this is where it's going to be interesting. Who would you have in midfield? Mm, Central uh, midfield. Think, yeah. yeah, sure. Um, Sosa starts for me. Um, I know, we, you know, we mentioned that he's he's not quite as mobile as you'd like, but mm-hmm. he dominates the ball so well. He's, he's that link from front to back, so that that's going to be important, obviously, to to getting us forward quickly. And the, the real the real decision there to be made is with Rossetto and, and Ibarra and Diego to because they they've got a good midfield themselves you know even the likes of someone like Keaton Parks is a, is a big talent and it is very much capable of of sort of driving that ball forward and, and getting NYCFC going on his day so mm-hmm. that three decisions got to be made it, if I'm Pineda I'm looking at this game at home the form that the two sides are in. I'm sticking with Rossetto at least for the first hour. Mm. And then maybe if you need to really energize at the end and, and push NYCFC back towards the end, that's when you bring in Ibarra. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could also bring in maybe a, a Marsadic as well, of course. And yeah. so there are uh, some options there. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's Rossetto and Sosa for me as well. But mm. um, yeah, I think that's the thing. It's like, you know, uh, with the the kind of uh, two striker look that we've had as well, like Moreno uh, centrally has been kind of just a uh, you know a wonder. It's been something yeah. that oh, you know like he he has been our most solid player that's for sure this yeah. entire season. And when he is played centrally, oh my god, it's just uh, yeah. he he runs the game and then he's everywhere. Yeah. And so you know I don't know if I want him completely touching that uh, that touch line. Um, maybe that's where Bello is uh, able to provide that with, and then yeah, Moreno can just be uh, you know everywhere. And um, but yeah, you know into those uh, into those forwards, those uh, wide forwards. Who do you got? Well, th- this is the interesting thing. You say wide forwards, but the way I do it is I'd have Moreno and Arujo sort of tucking into the half spaces and, and let Lennon and Bello stretch the field. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, a bit of obviously, a, it's a bit of shameless self promotion here, but before Marino joined, I did the scout report for uh, Dirty South. I watched quite a lot of footage on him and, mm-hmm. and spoke to a few journalists down on the ground down there who'd watched him. And it appeared very clear, and, and just browsing over stats and, and heat maps and, and all that kind of stuff, that he's very much a player who takes the ball through the middle and he just puts defenses on the back foot. And, and that's his biggest strength. And you saw that with the goal, he broke away. Just he had one thing in his mind, and that's drive the ball forward any way possible. Um, and I think those those players, especially at MLS, when how how open the games get, it's so important. So I'd have him and Arujo because arujo has got a similar skill set in that he can just glide past players so effortlessly. 
those those two are sort of dual tens tucking inside a little bit let, let the wing backs create the width and then as we say if he's fit Joseph just in front of him basically doing what Joseph does scoring goals and and getting hold of the ball and bringing others, in, others into play yeah uh, yeah no it's uh we have remarkably same, uh, you know, 11s here. I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's a... I mean, if you want, if you want to throw Kubo Torres up front, I can completely understand that. Yeah, but... yeah, that, that won't be happening, uh, but uh, <laughs> it is yeah, so definitely... Kubo is guy, but uh, yeah. I don't think he's going to that Joseph's going to score him. I think mm -hmm. he, with NYCFC's firepower, you know, it, it as much as they expect a, a relatively comfortable victory, it could become a shootout, and Joseph's got to be the guy for that. Absolutely, and it's it uh it will be the uh if I recall correctly it will be the first match uh, since he scored 100, uh yeah. you know that he's gonna be back at the Benz and so it'll be yeah. a somewhat emotional uh, return uh, yeah. for him and uh, so you know I suspect that that motivation that extra drive will be there from the mm. King for sure, but um yeah well you know that gets us to the score prediction, what do you think is gonna happen, Chris? Um, I mean, I know I've just said it could become a shootout, um, but I don't expect it to be. I'm going to go 2-1 to Atlanta United. I think we've just about got enough. Um, it won't be an easy game, even with NYCFC's poor form. We've got some good players there, but I, I think Atlanta should be able to keep them at arm's length and get the three points. Yeah. Um, I think I think it will be a shootout, uh, even though as good a form as uh, Brad Guzan has been in, uh, with that kind of last minute uh, yeah. kind of stoppage time save that he made. Um, he's been really, really strong, uh, you know, stopping uh, stopping balls and, um, you know, all that this season. But, uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be a 3-2 win for Atlanta United. So, yeah, there will be some entertainment on a Wednesday night, mm. hopefully. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those, uh, sometimes it's been a little bit a little bit dire on the uh, goal scoring department uh, on these like weekday matches as well. But yeah. so hopefully that is the case. But uh, yeah, guys, let us know what you think is going to happen in the comments below. But no, Chris, you had a, you had a thought? Yeah, I was going to say, I hope you're right because some of the some of the midweek games have been quite poor and they got normally gone midnight by the time they kick off on, on my time zone. So that'll certainly be worth staying up for. So. I hope you're right on that one. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. No, it's uh, there have been literally, I think, times where, uh, yeah, you know, especially early on this season, that the play has been so dire that it, uh, yeah, uh, I would not blame people if they fell asleep because it's just <laughs> really, uh, really difficult to stay awake, uh, especially if you're, yeah, already at midnight, should be asleep. <laughs> yep. I don't know how you do it, man, but uh, you know, it's uh, you're amazing for. Uh, for not only, uh, you know, doing all the things you do, uh, you know, especially, I mean, shout out to you. There's uh, a little news that you broke uh, this week as well. Ricardo Pepe wants to leave FC Dallas. So, uh, yeah, big shout out to that. Uh, Grant Wall gave you a shout out. I believe uh, Roger Gonzalez also gave you one. Uh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, so congrats to you. Thank you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, even uh, you, you spoke about it before uh, we recorded, but uh, the man Fabrizio Romano even followed you. I mean, duh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a big win. That, and that's, that That's the kind of thing you phone your mum about, even though she doesn't know who Fabrizio Mar Romano is. So <laughs> <laughs> she's just like, oh, OK, yeah, well, that, is that a good yeah. thing? <laughs> Pretty yeah, much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except in an English <laughs> accent. But yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, but uh, yeah, Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, yeah, tell the good people where they can find you on the internet. Yeah, uh, you can get me on Twitter at CJSmith91, and I'm also on Instagram now at Chris underscore Smith underscore MLS. So drop me a follow on there and, and get in touch. I'm always happy to talk. Yeah, indeed. He's a great follow. He, uh, yeah, offers so much to the LA United community, and so it's absolutely a pleasure for me. But uh, yeah, guys, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh!